Okay, so this is the second tutorial in the Anime Japanese Garden tutorial series. Today we are going to do the wood. We are going to make one base wood shader, and then we are going to make three extra wood shaders branching off from that one shader. But before we begin, I just want to give a huge thanks to those supporting me on the Golden Spoon tier list on Patreon. Your support is much appreciated. And now let's get back to the video. So we are back at our scene, and we are going to make the first base shader for our wood. We are going to start with the side panels over here, and then we are going to branch off to the top dark panels. I'm going to be using this texture. The link will be in the description below if you want to download it. So obviously you'd have to UV unwrap it if you have your own scene. But if you have the scene that uh, I provided in the previous tutorial, then everything should be unwrapped for you. So after we finish this shader, we can just duplicate it and edit it as much as we like on the other objects. So as you can see in the reference, the top is dark. It stays dark here at the top because there's no light source lighting it up. And the bottom is brighter because it has a light source, which is the window. So we are going to control T the image texture. And then I'm going to bring in a mix color. This is so that I can influence the color of the image texture. So we are going to set that mix to color. And then we are going to bring up the factor to the full value and change the color to a nice orange brown. All right, but we're not done yet. We are going to duplicate this mix color again because as you can see in the reference, it's, it has a pinkish shade to it. So we are going to duplicate the mix color and then we are going to set the bottom B socket to not a brown, but we are going to set it to a more pink purple. And then we just need to lower the factor to maybe 0.9. As you can see without it, it looks more orange and with it, it has a tint of pink, which is nice. And then we are going to just edit the image texture a little bit further by adding a color burn uh, mix color and plugging the image texture into the B socket. So for this uh, normal side panels uh, texture, we are going to add the shadow coming from the bottom. We are going to bring in a gradient texture and we are going to make the normal gradient T that I made a bunch of times on this YouTube channel. Alright, and then I'm going to bring in the mix color, set it to multiply, bring our base shader that we just made and plug it into the A socket and then plug that into the BSD. So now, all we need to do is obviously rotate it on the 90 degrees, and there we have our gradient texture sorted. Just before we finish the, um, the base shader, we can just uh, bring in a bump node and a color ramp. This is so that we have a little bit of distortion that is influenced by the wood, so the wood stands out more and it's more apparent. So we're going to plug this into the normal of the BSDF, You can uh, obviously change the roughness to how much you want, but I chose to keep the roughness to the max value because I like how it looks without any deflections. Okay, so that is our base texture done. All we have to do now is we, need, we can just branch off and change the shader to match the different part of the scenery. So we are going to first start with the panels in between the side panels. So as you can see, the gray areas between our base shader, these are different slots that would have a shadow in them because we want to make it seem like they are wooden tiles at the side. These dark parts would just be uh, the shadows in between each tile. We can delete the bump node. I'm actually going to add the gradient node to you later on because I think it would need it. Uh, but I'm just going to change a little bit of the colors I'm going to do is I'm going to set the purple mix color to multiply and also change the purple color itself so to a more muted uh, purple color and if you want to you can copy the Xcode uh, I'm gonna put it on screen for you 
There we go, there it is. Okay. And there. So now we have the dark the dark slots in between each panel. And I'm just going to copy and paste the gradient node back in because I think it, uh, it would look good. Okay. Right, that's solid. So now the bottom wood slots are finished. All we need to do now is we need to change the roof because, as you can see, it shares the colors with the slots and the gradient makes the uh, this texture a little bit weird. So we can just uh, make the slots have their own shader and then delete the gradient node 3 because the top will look better without it. So as you can see, we are just taking the base shader and we are just chopping and changing uh, to our liking because the basis is finished. And now for the beams, all I did was I copy and pasted the base shader again and then I'm just going to change the gradient node because I want to make the top of the beam the same shader as the rooftop shader. So I'm going to flip the color ramp by the gradient node as well as change the gradient node from being in the B socket to the factor because I want to make the color uh, what is what the gradient is influencing. So the color of the roof will be coming from the top of the beam so that it matches the roof color. Therefore I'm just going to uh, paste the hex code that I put up on screen uh, onto that slot. I'm now copying the hex code and then I'm going to paste it into the color. So there we go, now it matches the roof. Pretty good. And then I'm just going to add another gradient node 3 so that it matches the bottom side panels as well. So it, the beams would match the roof and it would match the bottom. Okay, so now we have done three shaders. I'm just going to finish this off by making a final shader that is lighter than the normal base shader. Because, as you can see, the window should be influencing uh, the surroundings a little bit more. So, I'm going to make a wood texture that is pretty bright. The only thing I'm changing is I'm bringing a, in a hue and saturation value node and then bumping up the value a bunch. So I made it around 20 or 15. Uh, but you could make it, obviously, uh, how high you want it. And there, that is it for the wood textures of the scene. All you need to do now is just copy and paste the shader and then edit it to your liking. That is basically it for the wood texture.
you can uh, shade the door if you want to but if you want to add the trees all you need to do is you just need to watch comfort marks tutorial uh, about trees it's pretty good you need to make the trees and then you can just add it behind the doorway then delete the door or you can keep it it's up to you so that's the trees if you want to add them and that is our wood texture so what we have done so far is we have finished the windows uh, some of the lighting and we have also done all the different types of wood textures which were actually the main parts of this uh, environment believe it or not because the mat and the wall is super simple as well as the ropes everything else is pretty simple in texturing but uh, that is it for today hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one <laughs> Dumpster! Wow.